Hi, YouTube. <clears throat> so, um, my name is Gary Barrett, and I am uh, my. I am also with uh, USAID. I'm, I'm the only government person I think on this panel. But my important, most important job, kind of like his most important job, is being a dad. And I would say your real most important job as an individual is just being a good person, right? That's your most important job. If you be, a, if you're a good person, it will carry you through work. But for the last six years, I was the deputy director of the Office of American Schools and Hospitals at at USAID, which is the only public diplomacy office. And so what my day-to-day -day job looked like was actually working with private sector partners um, in the U.S. and overseas and trying to figure out projects that would help to advance U.S. public diplomacy abroad. So that means trying to make people like Americans more, right? So not like the U.S. government, not care about the U.S. government, but really making sure that U.S. citizens overseas are able to do work to go to school, do those kind of things overseas. So we worked in about 80 countries, um, from your middle income countries and high income countries to your low income countries like Afghanistan, Sudan, Somalia, places like that. Um, and so that was probably the main part of my job is really working on the relationships between these private sector partners and kind of the government projects that we're doing on the ground. But then uh, another part of my job was working with the folks on Capitol Hill and actually going to talk to them about why it was important for our projects to maintain funding, right? So, because all of our money comes from Congress. And so we had to go, I had to go and justify why we were working in country X or spending money in country Y, which was great. And also if we had budget increases or if we were looking to get budget increases, I had to justify why we thought we had budget increases. So that's what I did uh, for the last six years. I worked at USAID for a total of 20 years, um, and I was in the Marine Corps before that. But the last two months, I've been working back at the Department of Agriculture as the Deputy Director for the, the National Partnerships Office. And that's really just an office that tries to make it easier for government to work, again, with the private sector, because I think that's the, the future is more private public engagement. So that's me. Thank you very much, Gary. That was a perfect segue because my next question was going to be if folks could tell us what they see are the keys to successful partnerships between private and public um, and the ways that, um, either pros or cons, but the ways that they've seen successful partnerships or successful transactions between private um, entities and the government and what advice people have about like how to make that work. Gary, you want to take it? Yeah, so I'll start with that question. <clears throat> it's, it's a question that you find people ask all the time, like how to make a successful partnership. The first thing you have to ask yourself when you're doing it, if you're on the government side or on the private sector side, or even if you're from the legal side of looking at, is this legal, right? Because every office has a general counsel's office that will say, can you do this? But what you want to look for first is mutual benefit. There's always going to be on your side some type of benefit you want. So like I'll give me an example for the U.S. Park Service, they may want to go into a private partnership with uh, a private entity because they don't have the budget to support, you know, managing the land, right? But they can't go to, you know, Apple and say, "Hey, we want you to give us two hundred million dollars because we don't our budget shortfall doesn't allow us to manage Yosemite." You can't do that, right? So what you want to find out is you want to say, "Hey, private sector corporation, I think that some of the things that we have to offer on this land may be mutually beneficial to you." Um, can we talk about partnership opportunities? That's how you start off. And so if you approach partnerships from what is mutually beneficial or what you think may be mutually beneficial, I think that is your perfect entree into having a successful partnership. And then I'll, I'll kick it down the road. Anybody else? Um, was it the partnerships? Yeah, just successful keys to partnership between, <coughs> I think we all have the image of the government as being a particular quagmire, a difficult oh, yeah. thing to manage. And so I'm curious how you have been able to be successful in um, working with the government and, and getting your goals met. Yeah, I, I could touch on that, I guess, to, to some extent. I actually work, used to work in the government. I've been here for 16 years. Is that, yeah, good, great, brief. 
16 years. Um, before that, I worked for the local government. I worked for the district government under the mayor. Um, Tony Williams used to be the mayor of the district. So I had so I gained some insights by working with him. And then since coming here, one of the evolving um, areas of, of practice areas is the uh, is a is a P3 office in the district. And a lot of most cities have now public private partnerships with an understanding that there's as the um, senator said mentioned this morning, there's certain there's certain areas where government does it better than the private sector. And then obviously there's um, there's a lot of things that the private sector does better. Um, than the government. So I think it's becoming increasingly clear that, you know, harmonizing the two um, is to the overall benefit of, of, um, of, of, you know, of the populace, of all of us. So I've, um, I've seen where uh, that's an increased discussion. And I think that uh, what, in my practice, where I've seen that occur is, uh, you know, accessing dollars, private sector dollars supplementing or having government dollars supplement private sector enterprises in order to have certain pro um, projects that perhaps the the markets left without the incentives perhaps wouldn't have, wouldn't have occurred. Um, so I see a lot more of that occurring, happening now. You know, in terms, and we see that a lot where there's blighted areas in certain parts of town where, um, you know, ordinarily um, development wouldn't occur. For instance, I did a project here in Washington once upon a time um, before, I think most of you were probably born or very little for sure, um, in downtown in Chinatown here um, next to the Verizon, this capital, um, the capital, was it Capital One Arena where the Wizards play. Um, there wasn't much Verizon happening. Center. Yeah, the Verizon Center, now it's Capital One Arena, they changed the name. Um, there wasn't much development occurring, so what the local government did in order to um, incentivize or have uh, private developers come in, um, do development there, they provided um, some sort of a certain economic development tool, tax increment financing, which allow, it's a grant essentially saying that um, if you build here, we'll give you, you know, we'll give you government taxpayer dollars in order to have you build in this particular area, to use that as a, in order to establish an, an economic stimulus uh, program, if you will, or a building that served as that economic stimulus for that area. So I've seen there, that's a, that's a growing area here um, in, the, in the states, these public-private partnerships, which is really emerging of capital, bringing together capital for both the public and private with certain outcomes as a goal. Uh, one last thing I think uh, that I think we, we try to touch upon is that, so there are things that private sector does better than government, but there's also liability and um, kind of risk that the private sector is able to take more so than government. So like using the example with the rockets, right, it is easier for the U.S. government to give a grant to a corporation like SpaceX to do a rocket launch. And if they have a mishap, which is you know, hopefully they wouldn't have a mishap, but if they did, it would not set their programs back as much as if like when the Challenger exploded, it set back the space program at NASA way, way back because they had to now, there were different things, even though it wasn't no, any fault of NASA, they had different things that they had to uh, ensure to make sure the projects went forward. So a lot of times if you have to take some type of calculated risk, it is much better to invest, this is what the US government is doing, investing in a private corporation to allow them to assume some of that risk, but then that also allows their research and development to go forward faster. For more information on public-private partnerships, please leave your questions below, subscribe and like, and I will get back to you. Thank you very much for watching. Plus that like button.